Greetings and good morning to the members, friends, and family of Mount Calvary Baptist Church. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go unto the house of the Lord. The Mount Calvary Baptist Church of Rockville, Maryland is one church in multiple locations. This morning we worship live at our main campus at 608 North Horners Lane while you worship with us viewing from your TV screen, tablet, monitor, wherever you are in the world. We are gathered together in the name of Jesus to worship the true and living God. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Our God is truly an awesome God. We're just thankful for this wonderful beginning of New Year 2023. We want to give God the praise because he is just such a worthy God. Come on and lift your hand, put your hands together. Give God some praise. Let's lift him up because he is an awesome God. And we just want to just lift him and sing praises to his name. Keep 
Hallelujah. Is he worthy? Is he worthy? Is he worthy? Come on, somebody out there ought to believe that he's worthy this morning. This ain't just a new day. This is a new year. This is a new us. This is a new Mount Calvary. It's time to start fresh because we know he's worthy. We know he's worthy. We've seen the evidence that he's worthy. Hallelujah, he's worthy. Hallelujah, he's worthy. Yeah, yeah. At the beginning of 2023, let's decree and declare that the devil's a liar. We're here to praise his name. We're here to worship God today. That's our decree today. Because we know he's worthy. So listen, I know we, we promised this was going to be an abbreviated service, but it seems like everybody trying to conspire to get us fired up this morning, okay? Let's just go with the Spirit of God. How about that, huh? Let's just go with the Spirit of God. See, 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 see. You better stop. You better stop. You better stop. You better stop. Y'all trying to start something in here. knees can do that. I didn't know my knees could do that. <laughs> so listen. No, no, stop. You stop right there. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mount Calvary. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be lifted up the everlasting doors. Yeah. And the king of glory will come in. I'm telling you, the king of glory will come in. Who is the king of glory? Who is this king of glory? The Lord of all. The Lord strong and mighty. He is the king of glory. He is the king of glory. <laughs> He is the King of Glory. Thank you, Let us pray. Thank you, Let us pray. Hallelujah. Oh, great King. Oh, God, we thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. You have shown up and showed out already this morning. At the beginning, at the eve of a brand new year, God. You have shown yourself to us already. And we're grateful to you, God. We pray, Father, that we honor your presence that we honor your spirit we pray that we honor your power and your might not just in this place in this moment but in our lives day by day moment by moment god we pray that we would have the courage to to honor you and praise you wherever we are we pray god that we would have the strength and the courage to call out your name to not be ashamed of who you are and the gospel that you've given to us god we pray god that we would be stronger and better christians god we pray that as we love you we would show your love and share your love with everyone that we encounter god we thank you god as we enter this time of worship we give you permission god to move in our hearts and in our minds and in our bodies do with us as you will father 
bless us. Keep us. Teach us. And love us. Even forgive us, oh God. In Jesus' name. Amen. As we prepare for our children's, uh, uh, for our congregation of him, I want to invite all children, any children ages 3 to 12 to join Reverend Dr. Holt over here to go down for Children's Church. We know that the same God is doing great and powerful things down there with them. So parents, please don't be afraid to trust your children to them if there are any. Now we're going to have our congregational hymn. We've come this far by faith. You'll see the words on your screen here in the sanctuary and in the cyber sanctuary. Let's not sing like we're ashamed or afraid. Let's sing with power and authority because indeed we have come this far by faith. ministers and preachers in the pulpit that we don't have an EMT right here when they jump it up and down like that. But we know that they're excited. I know Barry's knees will hopefully survive. <laughs> My name is Milton Harrison, and I'm blessed to read the scripture today. It's from the Old Testament, the book of Joel, not Job, Joel, Joel, uh, chapter 2, verses 25 through 27, New King James Version. Hear ye the word of the Lord. So I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust. My great army, which I sent among you, um, 
waiting for the screen. <laughs> I guess it's a problem, so I always be ready. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be put to shame. Then you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. I am the Lord your God and there is no other. My people shall never be put to shame. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and application of his holy word. Amen. So, um, this is a serious time in our worship where we all get to contribute in different ways. God has asked that we bring our treasures into his storehouse and that we be good stewards of all that he gives us. Remembering that the earth is indeed his and everything that we have belongs to him. He gave it to us. Amen. Our tithes, our offerings, all that we give, we're not giving to a church, we're not giving to a preacher. We're giving to the Lord and the Lord is using that to build his kingdom. We primarily give through writing our checks and bringing them in here, putting them in the offering plates or um, in the cyber world using Realm. So we ask that you would consider letting the Lord use you and your gifts to be a blessing to others. Don't forget that as we continue this journey, we're still trying to meet the early loan payoff and pay off the debt on the Leon Grant Family Life Center. So all that you give and all that you do, do it to the glory and honor of God. Amen. Amen. Father, we do thank you for this day and for the time that you've given us here in this worship. We thank you for all of our treasure and all that you have provided to us. We're so grateful to you, God. We simply ask that you would bless what we give here not just here in this moment in this place today but the offerings through the cyber sanctuary the offerings that we put in the mail all that we give to you god we pray that you would bless it multiply it and use it for the building of your kingdom we thank you we love you we honor you we ask your blessings on each and every gift and each and every giver in jesus name amen
things come of thee, O Lord. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. Amen. We thank God for another opportunity to worship through giving. Praise the Lord and Happy New Year, Mount Calvary. Hallelujah. The Lord has blessed us to see the year 2023. Aren't you glad about it? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We say welcome to those of you who are here in the physical campus. We say welcome to those of you who are in the cyber sanctuary. We are so glad that you have logged in this morning to worship with us. And we pray that there's a blessing for you in worship. We ask that you would take this time to be a techno evangelist and cyber missionary and share this service with someone who might need to be in the word and worship with us today. You can simply cut and paste the link on YouTube and text it to your partner, your friend, your neighbor. You can also uh, click share on Facebook and all of the people on your timeline will be able to join in and worship with you. Also, uh, once you have done that, why don't you take a moment, if you have not yet done so, to greet your neighbor in the comment section, uh, let, in the live chat, let them know that you're glad to be in worship with them and wish them a happy new year. Right here in the sanctuary, let us greet one another with a hearty wave. You can point your finger at someone, wink at them, amen, and we can just say, happy new year, everybody. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, do we have any first time visitors visiting with us starting the new year in worship? Amen. God bless you. Will you uh, continue to raise your hand or stand, how, whatever makes you most comfortable? Amen. Amen. Sister, we are so glad you are starting off the new year with us, and we pray that there's a special blessing in the word and worship. In Mount Calvary, we know how to be warm to our visitors and friends uh, as she uh, moves about today, so to make sure we show some Mount Calvary love to her. Uh, also, we are so grateful that not only are we seeing a new month, but we have a new year. We have to focus on the fact that we are in a new month. And so we want to acknowledge all January birthdays. If you were born in the month of January, will you raise your hand or stand? Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. To all of the January babies, we pray that you are blessed this year on your birthday and that God would favor you with uh, many, many more. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to uh, just share a few brief uh, comments with you on today. Uh, we're going to attempt to have an abbreviated service. Amen. But if we have another shout session, I wouldn't mind that either. Amen. Amen. Because God is worthy of the praise. Uh, we might have one right now because I do want to announce that uh, as we cross into the new year, uh, although this will be confirmed in auditing later in the year, Mount Calvary, we met our DSCR obligation. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. But we ought to give God a good praise for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And the words of uh, Reverend Sterling King that he pulled from, from a sermon series in 2021, we're going to slay this giant. Amen. Amen. We're going to slay this giant, and we are going to be a debt-free congregation. Uh, uh, as it comes to giving, we do want to remind you that at this point, we're only receiving electronic gifts through Realm. Now, we know that when, we, uh, when the pandemic first started, we created multiple options for people to give. You had... Easy Tithe, you had PayPal, you had Cash App, but to mainstream our giving and our reporting, we are only moving to Realm. Now, I know that you are just too saved and, and too blood washed and too filled with the Holy Ghost to say, if I can't give on my app, I'm not going to give. I know that you are better than that, Mount Calvary. Let the church say amen. And so if you need to learn how to give, 
on uh, 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 Realm, we please ask that you would contact the church office. We have Deacon Surgeon and others who can, uh, man, I can, I can show you how to do that. I give through Realm. We have many of us who can teach you how to do it. It's very simple. All year long, you can see the progress of your own giving, and you can pull your own giving report at any time. It's a very convenient way to give. You can place the app on your phone, which is what I have done. You can log in from your computer, from your tablet. But we're moving to this one method of electronic giving for uh, in order to mainstream our reporting. And so we ask that you would please support us in those efforts. Let the church say amen. amen. Listen, just before we move on, we are so excited to see Brother Billy Arnwine and worship with us today. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you and your daughter. Hallelujah. We are so glad that 2023 found you in the house of prayer with us this first Sunday. Praise God. Amen. 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 All right. Uh, we want to remind you that we are continuing, praise the Lord, to distribute food. On um, this week, you can come to Mount Calvary Tuesday at 1 p.m. or Thursday at 5 p.m. to get food. And so if you need food, if you know someone who's in need of food, please send them to 608 North Horners Lane this week, Tuesday at 1 p.m. and Thursday at 5 p.m. This Wednesday, we will have virtual prayer and praise. However, Bible study will resume next Wednesday, January, I believe it's the 11th, 2023. Uh, we want to remind you that our internal mailbox is available for members to pick up your cards. It's full of cards at this point, and so if you've ever received a card from the internal mailbox for Christmas, you probably have a card waiting for you. So on your way out, make sure you stop by to pick up the gift or message that someone has left just for you. We also want to share that on next Sunday. We usually do this on the first Sunday, but we want to give you notice that on next Sunday, we will have installation of officers from Mount Calvary Baptist Church for the year 2023. And so if you are an officer and you would like to be a part of that in the sanctuary, please meet us next Sunday at the 11 a.m. service. We have so many reasons to remain before the Lord in prayer. Certainly want to pray for all of those who are yet traveling this holiday season. Uh, uh, and we have many on our sick and shut in list that we want to continue to keep in prayer as we move about this week. We, uh, by way of bereavement, we were apprised that Sister Virginia Bryant, while she was uh, in Mississippi for the homegoing of her sister, also lost an uncle. And so we want to keep her and her family in prayer. We know God is able to see us through. If you believe that, say amen. 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 At this time, we'll be led in prayer by Deacon Johnson. So good morning, Mount Calvary. Good morning. And happy new year. Uh, you know, you know, it's hard. It, it, it ought to be a praise moment right there because uh, not everybody made it to 2023. Amen. Amen. God has been good to us. He's blessed us. He's kept us. So we got a lot that we can say thank to God for. So let us go to the throne of grace right now. Lord, you are high and lifted up in this place. Your word teaches us that if mine, in 2 Chronicles Chapter 7, verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall honor themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. God, we need a healing in this land. Lord, as we look around and see all the things that are happening, and we don't understand it, but we know that we need a healing. So, Father, we're coming to you this morning asking for healing. First and foremost, thanking you for all you've already done for us, not just in 2022, but what you've already done for us in 2023. Because you woke us up this morning. You started us on our way. You gave us the mobility of our limbs. Uh, you gave us breath of life, Father. You've already done so much for us this morning. So we say thank you this morning, Father. You've been, been, been mighty good to us this morning, Father. Father, you've been our bridge over troubled water. Father, you've been that wheel in the middle of a wheel. You've been a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Father, you've been so much and done so much for us that there's no way that even if we had 10,000 tongues, we could thank you enough for what you've already done. Father, we come now bringing to the altar 
Mount Calvary Baptist Church and friends, Father, those who are here in the sanctuary physically and those who are in the cyber sanctuary. We bring them all to you, Father. You know each one of them name by name and need by need, Father. We just ask that you bless them according to your will this morning, Father. Father, we lift up those who are sick and shut in, those who are bereaved, those who are in need of traveling mercies, Father. We bring it all to you at the altar, Father, and ask that you bless it, Father, as only you can, Father. We put all of this in your hand, Father, because that's where it needs to be, because in our own devices, there's nothing we can do. We thank you, Father, for what you're doing right now in this place, Father. Father, we lift up to you our pastor as he come to lead us in another year, Father. Continue to gird him up on every leaning side. Bless his family, oh God. And Father, as he come today to break the bread of life, as the word goes out, Father, we know it will not come back for it, but as he preached the gospel, Father, if there's a man, woman, boy, or girl who do not know you in the pardon of their sin, Father, we ask that you prick their hearts today and have them come running asking, what must I do to be saved? What a New Year's present that would be, Father, to add to your flock, Father. We just thank you, Father, for what you're doing in this place. We thank you for our music ministry, Father. We thank you for the trustee ministry, the deacons, the deaconess, and all the ministries that work in this vineyard, Father. Help us, O oh God, to become the ministries that you would have us to be so that we can become the church that you would have us to be sitting on this corner in Lincoln Park, Father, as a beacon of light so that those out there in the world can see your work in us. Father, we love you for all that you do. We're going to go into the new year, Father, hopefully looking at things in a different perspective, being more thoughtful, being more careful, being more prayerful, and being more thankful. Father, we love you. We love you, Father. We thank you for 2023. We thank you in advance for what you're going to do. We give praise to your name for what you're going to do right now, Father. Just help us, O oh Lord, to worship you in spirit and in truth. And we will always be mindful to give your name all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. For it's in your precious son, Jesus' name, that we pray. And let the church say amen, amen, amen and amen. 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 And amen. Oh! 
2022, the Lord was my shepherd. In 2023, the Lord will be my shepherd. And in this moment, he's my shepherd right now. And I shall not want. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mount Calvary, I want to share uh, this morning as we begin a new series expounding on our annual theme, uh, which is regroup and restore. We'll talk about that in a moment. I want to share from the subtopic today. God has our attention. We must be the church. God has our attention. We must be the church. Um, for those of you who do not know, I think everyone knows that I have three children, four years old and under, although Desi will turn five on Friday. Please continue to pray mine and my wife's strength in the Lord. Amen. Uh, Desi will be five on Friday. Uh, Ruby is two in, I believe, nine months. She will be a three in March. Baby Luke is, will be 11 months, I believe, on Wednesday. He'll turn a year, February 4th, which was my departed brother's birthday. And uh, when uh, we brought Luke home and he met Ruby, for Ruby it was love at first sight. And we thought that Luke was our baby, but he became Ruby's baby. Uh, in the morning, when we would be getting dressed, I would hope to get myself together. Then I could work on the girls and get Luke last. If Luke started crying, I could hang up that plan because Ruby would take off like a dart. Lukey is crying. Lukey is crying. She'd go to his room and begin to play with him. Whenever she was close enough to grab him, she'd grab him by his head, his neck, and cover him with kisses. Uh, she was, he was her baby, but the older Luke gets, I notice that the dynamic is starting to shift. <laughs> and now they are competing over who is truly the baby. Last month or so, my wife bought, bought Squeeze, these little baby yogurts for Luke to have, and uh, Ruby began to beg for a Squeezy. My wife said to her, no, Ruby, you can't have a squeezy. Those are for the baby. And she looked at him and she looked at her and said, well, I'm daddy's baby. <laughs> and so she got the squeezy. Amen. Uh, 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 but but uh, uh, the older they get, the more the dynamic shifts. And so even up until this morning, I was woken up by what might constitute as their first argument. Uh, as they're trying to figure out who mommy is going to hold in bed. And Luke doesn't have many words, but with the few words he has, he held his own in the argument. <laughs> and so I find that, especially as it comes to who owns mommy, their arguments have gotten louder and louder, both of them trying to get her attention. We can chalk it up to maturity, for certainly they are babies. However, I do want to point out to you that there are more mature and legitimate reasons that even an adult might assert themselves to get a person's attention, perhaps to save them from danger or perhaps to make them aware of an opportunity. But I would have you to know today that God has a way of getting our attention. Our church theme for this year is Mount Calvary. Uh, 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 for Mount Calvary is that 2023 is the year we must regroup and restore as a congregation. What does it mean to regroup? To regroup is to reassess and reassemble, particularly after an attack or a reality altering occurrence. Praise the Lord. What does it mean to restore? To restore is to reinstate, to return, to repair, to reinvigorate. And the COVID-19 pandemic shut down the world as we knew it. Weddings, graduations, and other precious events 
were postponed or canceled. Our children lost a year or more of in-person schooling and many of us suffered with sickness or suffered the deaths of close loved ones. We lost the opportunity as a church for corporate worship and fellowship with our brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. However, through the lens of faith, we must see this pause on church as we knew it as the reset button that it is. And as we prepare prayerfully to return to more of the corporate and in-person functions of the church, 2023 is the year where we must regroup and restore. We will regroup by strengthening our operations and policies and expectation of growth and positive change as a church uh, as God continues to work in us and to work through us and we will restore our corporate worship of God, our fellowship, social activity and ministry to community to higher heights than before the pandemic and so I will be preaching the annual theme with the scripture for uh, uh, with the theme scripture for the month of January and then most of the Sunday morning messages this year will have the same overarching theme of regrouping and restoring but today we begin by sharing Again, from the topic, God has our attention, we must be the church. Our inaugural message for 2023 comes from the Old Testament book of the prophet Joel. The book of Joel is collected as one of the 12 minor prophets of the Hebrew Bible and as a book in its own right in the Christian Old Testament. The prophet Joel is only three, the book of Joel is only three chapters long covering only one single event in Hebrew history and that is when a plague of locusts overtook the crops of the children of Israel. Locusts are migratory insects that travel in vast swarms stripping the areas they pass of all of its vegetation. In ancient Israel, being an agrarian society with a farming-based economy like most ancient societies, was absolutely devastated by the swarm. Last year, Mount Calvary, I thought about planting a small garden outside uh, of my house in the backyard to grow some cucumbers, some tomatoes, a, a few okras, maybe some flowers, and I have not given up on doing that just yet, but I will admit that what discouraged me most about the idea of planting the garden is that there are more deer in my neighborhood than people. And I'm discouraged by the idea of going through the expense and the labor of raising a garden only to have wildlife take my efforts. Yet in the context of the scripture, the swarm of locusts not only destroyed the private gardens, but in this ancient agrarian society, the locusts destroyed the entire economic base, leaving the children of Israel destitute without means of trade, as well as food for themselves and their livestock. I cannot over-dramatize to you how cataclysmic the swarm of locusts was and their effect on the people in the book of Joel. This is potentially, it's debatably, one of the worst things that happened to the children of Israel in the Old Testament, certainly for, this present gener for that present generation. And so the book of Joel opens up in the very first chapter, well into chapter 2, with a lament over the great plague, which then caused a severe drought. The lament comes as the word of the Lord uh, uh, through the prophet Joel to give the people spiritual context on the catastrophe that they were suffering. And right in chapter 1, starting at verse 2, it says, Hear this, you elders. Give ear, all you inhabitants of the land. Has anything like this ever happened in your days? Or even in the days of your fathers? You've got to tell it to your children Tell your children's children and their children another generation what the chewing locust left, the swarming locust has eaten. What the swarming locust left, the crawling locust has eaten. What the crawling locust left, the consuming locust has eaten. Moving down to verse 8, Joel says, a, a lament like a virgin girded with sackcloth for her, the husband of her youth. The grain offering and the drink offering have been cut off from the house of the Lord. The priests mourn who minister to the Lord. The field is wasted. The land mourns for the grain is ruined. The, the new wine is dried up. The oil fails. Be ashamed, you farmers. Well, you vine dressers, for the wheat and the barley, because of the harvest, has perished. 
The vine has dried up and the fig tree has withered. The pomegranate tree, the palm tree also, and the apple tree, and the trees of all the field are withered. Surely joy has withered also. Then in verse 13, he begins to call the people to lament and fasting, saying, Gird yourselves and lament, you priests. Well, you who minister before the altar, come lie all night. And sackcloth, ye who minister to my God. For the grain offering and the drink offering are withheld from the house of your God. Consecrate a fast. Call a sacred assembly. Gather the elders uh, and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God. Cry out to the Lord. And as we move into chapter 2 of Joel, we see that the reason for the locusts may be more supernatural than natural. Therefore, Joel calls for a time of fasting and repentance. Verses 15 through 17 of chapter 2, he calls for a sacred assembly for the people to come together in prayer and in repentance. And in response to them coming together in prayer and repentance, the Lord promises to pull back the locusts. How many are glad that in 2023 we still serve a God who hears and answers prayer? The Lord speaking to the prophet Joel says, starting in verse 19 of of Joel 2, the Lord will answer and say to his people, behold, I will send you grain and new wine and oil and you will be satisfied by them. I will no longer make you a reproach among the nations. And with this promise, the Lord also promises the restoration of all that was taken by the locusts. I want you all to hang in with me because I'm going somewhere. He says in the words that we've lifted for our text that that uh, uh, trustee Harrison read so eloquently. So I will restore to you the years the swarming locust has eaten. The crawling locust, the consuming locust, the chewing locust. My great army which I sent among you, you eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. Then you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. I am the Lord your God and there is no other. My people will never be put to shame. Now Mount Calvary. I've been in church all my life, and at this point, I probably heard thousands of sermons. I've heard this text preached more than once, and when I've heard it, very often the focus is simply on how God restores. And don't get me wrong, to be sure, we serve a God of restoration. Do I have a witness in the house that when you come before the Lord and come right, he will restore? But there's some wording in the text that many preachers skip past, and I get it because it's theologically problematic. In verse 25, God says once again through Joel, so I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, the chewing locust, my great army, which I sent among you. God calls the locusts my great army that I sent among you. So this means that God is explicitly taking ownership for the locusts that totally destroyed and appended the lives of his own people. I know this is theologically problematic, especially in just generation, because we want to believe that God only sends good to us. But I believe that there's a powerful message contained in this passage that will help us if we don't oversimplify it and wrestle with it as it is. And what we've got to wrestle with is the fact that God sent the locusts. Now, with this, we must also recognize that this is a part of God's pattern uh, 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 in his relationship with the children of Israel. When the children would fall into sin, God would pull back and allow some devastation to happen. Whenever the children of Israel would fall into sin, God would let their enemies triumph over them in battle. Or God would allow foreign invaders to come in and attack them, even ultimately to the point where they were held captive for many years by the Babylonians and the Assyrians. However, what we are examining in the book of Joel in the month of January, January is the only time when God sent locusts to Israel to punish them. Another thing that we need to take note of in the text is that in the book of Joel, there is no naming of the sin. 
that caused God to send the locusts as punishment. Throughout the Old Testament, when God allows an invader to attack Israel or causes them to lose a battle as punishment, it is because they had sinned. And almost always, the sin is idolatry. They were following after other gods. However, the prophet Joel does not name a sin. He does not name a particular sin idolatry or otherwise as the reason that God sent the locusts. But we know that the people have sinned because we just read that they were called to lament and repentance. Are you still with me? With the biblical data I've just given you, I want to put a supposition before you, Mount Calvary. Since this is the only time in recorded scripture where we read God explicitly sending locusts, to destroy the crops of the children of Israel for their sins, yet there is no specific sin named. Is it possible that agricultural productivity had become the Israelites' God? Is it possible that they became so caught up in raising grapevines to make wine and raising olive trees to make oil and raising all kinds of other crops to become wealthy that work and farming and agricultural productivity took the front seat in their hearts and minds and God was placed on the back burner? I mean, if idolatry is the primary sin in the past that caused God to punish the children of Israel and to get their attention and to bring them to repentance, is it possible that in this instance, tending to the business of agriculture and work became their idol and that's why they were specifically attacked in that area so their focus would be drawn back to God. Are you still with me? Perhaps it is possible that God sent the locusts because God had been replaced in the hearts of the people with work and being productive not knowing that God was the one giving them what they needed in order to produce. While you're thinking of that possibility, I want to invite you to come back with me to 608 North Horners Lane. In the year of our Lord, 2023, where we are progressively coming out of a pandemic. And I would make the argument that before the pandemic, many of us and most churches were like the children of Israel. We were working in the church, being productive having meeting and meetings and hosting and events. We had become really good at what Reverend Walker Johnson called last night doing church. But the pandemic reduced us from doing church to being the church. I have another supposition for you. Is it possible that with the COVID-19 pandemic, God pushed pause on us doing church and made it so that we had to be the church? Yes, we lost a lot of our church pageantry. For a while, our meetings to plan the meetings to have the meetings died down. And in the pandemic, churchianity was stripped to its bare bones, and what we were left with was Christianity. <clears throat> Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying God sent the pandemic to us and all the pain and devastation it caused explicitly for this purpose, but I will say that God moved in that pandemic and he should certainly have our attention. Uh, God has our attention. And so as we return to uh, uh, the building for more in corporate uh, uh, worship and meetings and events, we have to be sure that we have learned from all that we went through these last few years. Amen. And that's how to be the church. Now, to make the claim that the pandemic forced us to focus on being the church, I need to spend the remainder of my time uh, addressing the following questions. How did the pandemic teach us to be the church? And then what are the elements of being the church we must hold on to as we come together to regroup and restore in 2023? Once again, how did the pandemic teach us to be the church? And what are the elements of being the church we must hold on to as we regroup and restore in 2023? First answer to that question is this. We must maintain a personal prayer life. We must maintain a personal prayer life. While sheltering in place, many of us were forced to stay in our homes where we had no other choice but to focus on the Lord. Yes, perhaps you binge watched some shows and made some phone calls to friends, read novels, walked around the block. But at the end of the day, our social lives were so severely circumscribed that we had time to focus on the Lord. 
I'll never forget when I was in college, uh, 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 the minister at one of the churches I often attended preached a sermon entitled, You Are Too Busy Not to Pray. Because there's a lot of people who would say, you know, I really wish I could pray and really pray and spend my time with God, but my schedule is too full to pray like I want. Well, during the pandemic, there was time. And as we work our way out of the pandemic, we need to make sure that there is time for us to continue to have a robust prayer life. If you have an hour a day to pray, that is wonderful. But even if you only have 10 minutes that you can reserve consistently in your schedule to talk with God, those 10 minutes can change the trajectory of your day, your week, your month, your life, and have a positive effect on those around you. Do I have a witness? To be the church, we must maintain uh, our personal prayer life. But not only that, to be the church, we must focus on the word. This is not to say that before the pandemic, we were not focused on the word. But while sheltering in place, uh, not only did we have time to study the Bible for ourselves, but we were able to connect and grow with others deeper in the word and in Bible study. Uh, when I came to Mount Calvary in 2019 during the initial pastoral search, one of the questions I was asked by the search committee is what can we do to grow the Sunday school? But by the time I got to Mount Calvary in 2029, God and the pandemic had already answered that question because the pandemic caused explosive growth in every one of our Sunday schools because now everybody had time for the word. Not only that, but on Sunday morning, people were able to log in from their various homes and really focus on the preached word of God. And if there was something that you missed in the sermon, you could go back and you can go to YouTube and Facebook and you can rewind it and take down your notes to make sure you understood the word and how to make application of it. And as we begin to return to in-person activities, we must continue to grow in the word of God we must continue to take advantage of Sunday school and all the Bible studies offered at Mount Calvary every week even if you attend in person when you get home you can still log in and again and review the message and allow the Holy Spirit to continue to speak to you to be the church we must be students of the word hallelujah not only that but to be the church we must continue to praise and worship God as we logged into Sunday morning worship during the pandemic, we did not have to worry about how we looked or who was looking at us. We could join in with the praise team and sing and praise God with abandon from our hearts. We could praise God and focus on the meaning of a song. Is there anyone here who's found that songs and hymns and spirituals hit different when you're going through? Hallelujah. And we need to come back to the house of prayer, praising God just as freely as we did in our living rooms. And I don't know about you, after all I've been through, I'm not worried about who's looking at me. After all I've been through, I don't worry, I'm not worried about who's got something to say. I'm going to give God the best praise every time I come in the house because you don't know what I've been through. You don't know what it took for me to get here. You don't know how I cried in the midnight hour. Hallelujah. Let's just practice that for 2023. For five seconds, can you give God praise like you don't care who's looking? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh. Three, two, one. Hallelujah. We're going to be dealing with that in the summer months. We're going to praise God and run around here in August. Let the church say amen. Amen. And and, 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 and our worship, let me say this also, our worship includes worship through giving. I lost all my amens. That's all right. <laughs> Although there may have been a reluctance to move to online giving before the pandemic, as is the case in many traditional Baptist churches, we are so grateful that our trustees and our financial officers move swiftly to make it so that we can give our tithes and our offerings to God <laughs> through electronic giving and we were able to still mail in our gifts. We were able to give as an act of worship to honor God. And we must continue to give God our tithe and our offering as an act of worship, not as a debt we owe, but as a seed we sow to support the work of the ministry to the salvation of sinners and the discipleship of the believer. All together to be the church, we must continue to give God praise and worship. I'm just about through. Lastly for today, to be the church, we must serve. We must serve. 
For years, this congregation has moved back and forth from our various homes to 608 North Horners Lane to worship God. But the pandemic caused us to realize the problem of food insecurity right here in our community. So that we connected with partners and every Tuesday and every Thursday, uh, uh, dozens of Mount Calvaryites would put on masks and gloves and volunteer to pack up boxes and packages of food for the hundreds of families that would come to our church each week. We would make direct contact serving people like Jesus did, placing packages of fresh produce directly into their vehicles. I don't know about you, but that sounds like some real good church to me. And as we move forward, we must continue to serve those in need as the arms and legs of Jesus Christ, showing our community and the world the love of God through acts of service and love. And I'm, I'm just so grateful for every step of progress we've been able to make and gathering together as we conclude. But as we come back together, let us not forget the lessons of what makes us the church and let us never fall into the habit of making church our God. Let us not fall into the habit of being so consumed with ministry projects that we don't have time to pray and to worship and to give and to serve. I'm glad to be back in worship. I'm glad to see my brothers and sisters. I'm glad to meet the members that I serve. And I want to say thank you to every one of you who came in to the in-person challenge between August and December. I met so many people each Sunday, new members. I didn't even know I was your all pastor. You knew me, but I didn't know you. But praise God, we had a chance to meet each other. Even up to last week, I met one sister that I had not met. She said, you are my pastor. I said, well, praise the Lord. I love the church. I was born in the church. I pray that when I go to heaven, I'll still be working and serving in the church. But at the end of the day, the pandemic taught me not to idolize the church. We have to worship the Lord of the church. Because when we put Christ first, everything will fall into place. Do I have a witness in the house? Matthew 6 and 33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. I'm closing, but I want to share this story with you. There's a story of, of a man who was very wealthy, of a couple that was very wealthy, and, and they struggled for years to have a child, and finally in their older age they had a child, uh, uh, but uh, the wife passed away in childbirth. And so uh, the father poured all of his love into his son, but eventually he too passed away. He passed away leaving great wealth. And so he had three brothers uh, that came to his homegoing service, and while there, his attorney tapped each of them on the shoulder and said, I need to meet you immediately following the funeral. And so they... Uh, buried their brother and made their way to the attorney's office <coughs> across town. And when they got there, they all sat down. And before the attorney, the attorney entered the room, they were rubbing their hands together because they knew their brother was wealthy. He had properties. He had stocks. He had bonds. He had, he had bonded art on display in his home. He had a yacht. He had vehicles. And they were just thinking to themselves what they were going to get. And so the attorney came in and said to the three brothers, as you all know, your brother was very wealthy. He had properties and he had art. He had stocks and bonds and vehicles and he had that huge yacht. But before we get to the dissemination of his property, uh, what your brother valued most in this life was his son. And he wanted to know which of you would take his son. So the oldest brother said, well, I can't take him. I'm too busy running my business. And the middle brother said, well, I can't take him. I, I have children of my own. The youngest brother said, well, I'm still doing my bachelor thing, so I can't be tied down with a kid. Meanwhile, the son was sitting outside of the office with his nanny. The nanny, overhearing this, came in and said to the attorney, Mr. Attorney, since the brothers don't want him, I'll take the son. And the attorney said to him, well, but by what means will you support him? He said, well, I don't have much. I have a one-bedroom apartment, but I'll give him the bed. I've taken care of him all of his life, and I'll raise him as my own. At that point, 
the attorney folded his folder, closed up his briefcase, and said, this meeting is adjourned. The brother said, wait a minute, wait a minute. What about the houses, the properties? What about the yachts? What about the stocks and the bonds and, and the artwork? And the attorney said, well, your brother had it stipulated. Whoever takes the sun can have it all. I'm closing here. But I wonder if there's anybody here who has learned that as long as you have the sun, you have all that you need to make it. Is there anyone here with a 2022 testimony who can jump up and be a witness and say the only reason I made it to 2023 is because I was leaning and dependent on his son. And I wonder if there's somebody else here who can say I don't know what 2023 lies ahead but I'm not worried. I know it's already all right because I have the sun. And as long as I have the sun, I have victory. If I have the sun, I have peace. If I have the sun, I have joy. If I have the sun, he can make a way out of no way. Yes, I'm so glad that my testimony today is that I may not have powerful friends and I may not have all the money in the world but I'm so glad that I have Jesus I have Jesus yes yes I have Jesus and he walks with me I have Jesus and he talks with me I have Jesus and he said he never leave me. Yes. I thank God for the church. But I'm holding on to Jesus. We must thank God for the church. But we must hold on to Jesus. God has to be our focus. 20, uh, 2020, 2021. Uh, all that we've done all of our lives in the name of being the church. We found out was really doing the church. Because when we sheltered in place, we realized we were still the church because we were able to call on God in prayer. We were able to grow in his word. We were able to give and to serve. And it's wonderful again to come back to all of our social activity, but we've got to keep the main thing, the main thing. Look, amen. Look at somebody, point at them and say, keep the main thing, the main thing. Amen. And, and, and I pray that as long as we continue to be Mount Calvary Baptist Church, that Jesus Christ will be the main attraction. If you're in agreement with that, let the church say amen. Everyone standing at this time, everyone standing, we want to extend an invitation. There may be someone here who does not know Jesus Christ and the pardon of your sin. If you want to be saved today, this first Sunday of the year, this first day of the year, why don't you come and give your life to Christ? The Bible teaches us in Romans 10, 9 through 10, that if we would confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, that he's the Son of God, that God raised from the dead, we shall be saved. For with the uh, uh, mouth, confession is made unto salvation, and with the heart, there's belief unto righteousness. And so if you believe that Jesus Christ is God, son and you feel God moving on your heart today you are halfway there the next step is you must make your profession and so we're inviting you to come today to be saved to give your life to Christ beyond that you may not have a church home uh, if you join today every day of 2023 you will have belonged to a church amen <laughs> praise God we have one coming will there be another that will come and unite with the church today come with us as we strive to be the church and not do church Hallelujah. Will there be another?
Let's sing that one more time. My burdens. Will there be another? Why don't you come today to be saved? Come to give your life to Christ. Come to unite with the church. The doors of the church are open. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together to give God praise. Amen. We are so excited. We have Chanel Neal coming home by way of Christian experience. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Chanel, we're so excited that you have come today by way of Christian experience. Uh, to unite with the family here and uh, we just want to ask you publicly as you're coming on Christian experience do you believe Jesus Christ is the son of God who died on the cross for your sin yes I do amen let's give God praise <laughs> hallelujah for another one that God has added to the church we'll have get your contact information and be in touch with you for new members class amen hallelujah at this time let us prepare for our benediction Father, we come to you at the close of this service truly grateful for another opportunity to have gathered in your name. We thank you, Father, for letting us see this new year, and we are excited about all that you have in store. Father, as we move forward, we thank you even for the lessons that we learned as we sheltered in place in the pandemic, that we must not simply do the church, but we must be the church as we communicate with you regularly in prayer as we become students of your word, as we praise and worship your name from our hearts with our words and our adoration and through our giving, and as we continue to serve those operating as your hand and, and as your feet. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would anoint us afresh for the task of ministry in 2023, that you would have your way at Mount Calvary Baptist Church from the pulpit through the door, that you will be glorified in all that we do, and we give you the praise. Now as we leave this place, but never your presence, we pray that the sweet communion of your Holy Spirit would rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth now and always. In Jesus' name we pray, let us sing the threefold amen. Go in peace.